Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we are going to be going over the equalizer modules in Ozone 8. And you'll notice that we have our EQ here and then our EQ here. So we got equalizer and post EQ. Nothing is different between these two. One is that just, you know, you get two EQs that can even operate like interchangeably. So what this, what this uh, suggests and the use case of this is say, you know, you have your equalizer and you're going to kind of correct errors, adjust things, uh, roll off the low end, things of that nature. And then you're going to want to, I don't know, uh, add some tape, um, add, I guess, some dynamics, maybe have dynamics going into tape, that might make a little more sense, and uh, an imager, let's just do that. And then you're going to want to EQ again, right, a post EQ, because you're making all these changes and uh, adding harmonics and doing things like that. And yeah, so that's why there's a post EQ here. So you can EQ before, for example, you drive it into the maximizer. So yeah, we're gonna kill two birds with one stone, and we're gonna be just going over an equalizer, which also goes over the post EQ. So this is the equalizer, and there's two modes down here. There's analog, and then there's digital. Analog, basically, it emulates classic analog EQs. It adds coloring, but the coloring is pleasing. And, you know, a lot of cool things here, the analog vintage and different kind of uh, uh, filter cutoffs here. And then we have our digital, which introduces, well, it's, it's digital. It's more precise. You have what's called surgical mode. And then you have your phase percentage which i will get into so let's go to analog first all right so this is your main window here we have our track all right there's a there's a few different views here this one is the one we are currently in we can have a full-on view here if you want to bring more of it in this is the default which will display you know all of our bands and uh yeah that's how you Enable them, you kind of click on this guy to turn them on and off. We can also just turn all of them off. So we just have one here, which is, you know, a pretty lonely EQ. It's more of like a, just a basic single filter. And then we have this guy here, which uh, might be useful for some people. Uh, you can directly dial in uh, the frequency you want to affect and the gain if you want to work in it that way, if you like to look at numbers. I like, I like this one right here. And uh, that's all well and good. The same information is displayed here. So we have a we have a couple of filters to go over. We have a high pass, which basically, oh, I just did something just out of muscle memory. Uh, what did I do there? I changed the, the cutoff. So we have a few cutoff options here in the analog mode: 6 dB per octave, 12 dB per, per octave, 24 and 48. These can be expressed in poles as well. Four pole, two pole, um, one pole, and then sixty. I don't really know. Anyway, I'm not going to pretend to know what that is. But yeah, it's just uh, steepness. This will reflect steepness of the cutoff. It's basically yeah how how, how hardcore uh, the cutoff is, and uh, you can also mouse wheel by hovering over this guy, or you can just drag these two things and move that. And that's how you adjust your cutoff. So let's do something steep. And let's roll something off at around 30 hertz or something. Or maybe even more so you can hear what's going on. All right, and that is an analog uh, high pass. It is flat. So each filter has several options. You can have flat. You can have a resonant, which adds a bit of a bump. Um, might not sound too good on our material. But it adds a bit of a bump and that emulates analog gear and then you have brick wall which is like you know a very um precise cutoff it's like infinite q and you can't even adjust that what this does is this basically cuts off everything below a certain point well almost everything um you know this 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 could uh work well if you have like a lot of information below 30 hertz but you know it's kind of it's kind of overkill uh but it's there and i remember way back when only the uh the cambridge eq could do this it was very intensive and kind of tricky to do without phasing issues 
but yeah, let's just let's just stick with flat. Uh, 6 dB per octave roll off might work well. Just a gentle roll off we can bypass as well. It really cleaned up that low end, and don't worry if it's a little bit too much. This is all for uh, practice and demonstration. So yeah, there's uh, yeah that high pass. Um, the uh, the digital high pass is a little bit different, uh, but not really. It just doesn't add color, and the brick wall's a little bit more kind of uh, flat because you know you're trying to avoid phasing issues. Uh, nowadays, and this is a, a different kind of conversation about the uh, the phase. So what happens here is I'll just mouse over it. So at zero percent is linear phase, and a hundred percent it's minimum phase. So if you're like, if you're if you're really curious about it, uh, Fab Filter uh, did a really good video about linear and minimum phase. I suggest you uh, watch that. They can explain it way better than me. But uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to, you know. What's happening is the phase is being inverted at the cutoff point, and it can be delayed slightly and could cause smearing. Uh, it's not something that you need to really worry about uh, starting out, uh, but it is there. Uh, mind you, you know, everything is going to add color. Any kind of EQ change you're doing is going to take away something and then add something, and it's all about that compromise. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't. Don't stress too much about phase, but Fab Filter has a really good video that explains all this. So yeah, let's move on. So yeah, I want to go back to analog. The analog cutoff, maybe 24 dB per octave, or maybe no, I'll go back to six. This is about right. Right, smooths out that. Uh, you have a few different options here. I'll just go to our EQ2. This one is a bell. I'll change this to low shelf. Low shelf is really interesting because it's kind of kind of self-explanatory. I'll just show you what that looks like just by itself. It's a low shelf. So it's not a hardcore filter cutoff. It just kind of goes down and it's like that. And this is useful. I, I really like uh, shelves because what they do is they're just useful to kind of shift the balance of your music. So say if you're a little bit too high heavy, you can kind of shift it just it tilts it it's like a tilting kind of eq and it's uh really useful and you have you know different shapes you got vintage vintage ones which add a bump uh vintage stuff always adds bump and this is where that kind of rule comes from where if you uh, lower something kind of like this a little bit before the cutoff point you should boost as well and i guess that's where that rule came from that's what i've always kind of heard um and it kind of makes things sound nicer and uh, more cohesive. Uh, you know, different kind of math, essentially. Um, this one is a little bit more smooth, I guess. And uh, resonant, which kind of does that. So same, same rule. You kind of take away a bit more and you boost up here, which kind of keeps the balance, so to speak. Anyway, so let's uh, turn band one back on. Easy as that. And uh, yeah, let's kind of do that. And then low pass, kind of self-explanatory. Let's just add a low pass. And uh, what I want to do is those hi-hats are a little bit too intense. So a gentle 6 dB per octave analog low pass. Very gentle. And then I'm going to bypass and unbypass so I can hear and you can hear what's going on. Right, this is the first stage in mastering. I'm taking away so I can accentuate later. I'm just trying to like, just kind of chill out the the signal a little bit using a very high quality filter. And uh, yeah, so let's go and select another band. How about that? So I want this to be a little bit more surgical. And I'm gonna be using the digital EQ. And I'm going to use the bell, perfect. And I'm going to adjust the cue that way. You'll notice that the digital cue doesn't have the uh, numbers. It's kind of linear, right? This, this, our, uh, our high pass 
that we're using to roll off the low end as 6, 12, 23, they're set values, right? But the band 3 isn't a set value. And this is kind of exceptionally important to notice with digital EQs is it's digital. It's like not reliant on transformers and capacitors and it's not popping out the back of a mixing desk. It's actually, you know, digital. And you can get really surgical with it, even with the surgical mode on. The surgical mode is an, an, more of an extreme cut. So if you have like something crazy going on, you can adjust that. But for the sake of you know, if you if you have a if you have to be using surgical stuff, you might want to go back in your mix and figure some things out. But yeah, let's just uh, roll around and find any anything that might be poking out. Oh, what I'm doing there is I'm uh, alt clicking, and I can solo that part there. And that's a good way to uh, kind of figure out what's going on. So let's leave that because we'll save that for the next step. That is our EQ. So from here, I'm going to explain uh, the two m other modes of EQing. And uh, yeah, let's just open up the uh, post EQ. They gave us two EQs for a reason. And right now we've been working in just stereo EQ. So it takes, you know, the left and the right and merges them together and we're affecting them both at the same time. Right, I'll turn that to a high pass so we can hear. Right, and that's all well and good, but there's two other options here, which is pretty neato. We have our stereo section, which we're in, and then we have our MS, mid and side, right? And this gets to be a little bit, not confusing, but it's actually, it's actually fun. So mid, mid and side is kind of an independent processing of the stereo material and the mono material. Just think of it that way. Uh, a technical way to explain it is you're taking mathematically the difference between the left and the right and then processing that differently from the similarities between the left and the right. So I hope I didn't, hope I didn't lose you. So right now we're in mid mode. We're taking out the mids, right? But right now we're hearing, the majority of what we're hearing is the side material. Pretty, pretty, pretty spooky, right? So what this allows is you have control over the stereo image, which is pretty neat. And you can adjust it, um, or you can adjust it here, mid and side. You can adjust the side here, or the mid, things like that. Basically it turns into two EQs. So uh, what is very common is you don't want a lot of side material to be accumulating in the low end because you can, then you get phasing, it's not that pleasant. All right, so I'll solo, oops, I'll solo this. So right now I'm only listening to the side material. Or I can like boost a little bit of the high end here, right? There's no rules. All right, so that is that. We'll go to mid. Solo the mid. This is not necessarily the mono signal. This is just the mids. Like mid as in the similarities between the left and the right summed together. So I'm, I'm adjusting the the tonality of the of the mix of the the master just uh, by using mid side mode. So there's that. Let's uh, bypass and see what we've done. All right, I might have went a little too crazy, but whatever. Right. 
and that is uh, the EQ. Um, so, yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed. Hope you learned stuff. Take care and have a good one.